Sexual harassment is conduct that is sexual in nature, is unwelcome, and denies or limits a student's ability to participate in or benefit from a school's education program. Sexual harassment can take different forms depending on the harasser and the nature of the harassment. The conduct can be carried out by school employees, other students, and non-employee third parties, such as a visiting speaker. Both male and female students can be victims of sexual harassment, and the harasser and the victim can be of the same sex. The conduct can occur in any school program or activity and can take place in school facilities, on a school bus or at other off-campus locations, such as a school-sponsored field trip or a training program at another location. The conduct can be verbal, nonverbal, or physical. The judgment and common sense of teachers and school administrators are very important elements in determining whether sexual harassment has occurred and in determining an appropriate response, especially when dealing with young children. Factors used to elevate hostile environment sexual harassment. As outlined in the following paragraphs, the Office of Civil Rights, OCR, considers a variety of related factors to determine if a hostile environment has been created, i.e. of a sexually harassing conduct by an employee, another student, or a third party is significantly serious that it denies or limits a student's ability to participate in or benefit from the school's program based on sex. The OCR considers the conduct from both a subjective and objective perspective. In evaluating the severity and pervasiveness of the conduct, OCR considers all relative circumstances, i.e. the constellation of surrounding circumstances, expectations, and relationships. Schools should also use these factors to evaluate conduct in order to draw common sense distinctions between conduct that constitutes sexual harassment and the conduct that does not rise to that level. Relative factors include the following. The degree to which the conduct affected one or more students' education. The Office of Civil Rights assesses the effects of the harassment on the student to determine whether it has denied or limited the student's ability to participate in or benefit from the school's program. Example, a student's grades may go down or the student may be forced to withdraw from school because of the harassing behavior. A student may also suffer physical injuries or mental or emotional distress. In another situation, a student may have been able to keep up his or her grades and continue to attend school even though it was very difficult for them or her to do so because of the teacher's repetitive sexual advances. Similarly, a student may be able to remain on a sports team despite experiencing great difficulty performing at practices and games from the humiliation and anger caused by repetitive sexual advances and intimidation by several team members that create a hostile environment. Harassing conduct in these examples would alter a reasonable student's educational environment and adversely affect the student's ability to participate in or benefit from the school's program on the basis of sex.